Most world leaders have no idea what they are doing in the slightest. What conspiracy theory do you believe is true? The last one is weird as f Crime in big tourist cities like Las Vegas, is systematically underreported in order not to hurt business. There is a lot of stuff going on in that town most do not know about. The Mormon church owns interests in most of the strip now, the mafia runs the garbage collection services still, yes there are problems buried in the desert. There used to be a theft ring involving cops that would steal winnings from tourists that called cabs back to their hotels they would pull over the cab, and say they found drugs in the cab, all the money would be confiscated as evidence. A tourist would not show up for court six months out and the money goes to the police department. This was a common thing for a while and I don't know if it still happens. The city got conned by Harris Communications out of nearly a billion USD for a radio system that didn't work. The meth and theft problem in North Vegas is by design by Hells Angels and NVPD and Clark County. Toothpaste advertisements show way too much toothpaste on the toothbrush so that you'll use more toothpaste than you need, therefore causing you to buy toothpaste more often. Alka-Seltzer had hit a point where their sales had plateaued and they weren't able to gain more. They also knew that using two tablets of Alka-Seltzer had the same effect as one. So, they came up with the slogan plop, plop, Alka-Seltzer and showed two tablets being dissolved in a glass in the commercials. Their sales doubled overnight. Every so often, big sock companies make subtle changes to their design, so that when you buy new socks, they'll never match your old ones. Also, I can't find generic white slash black socks for my kids. They all look different from each other. Big Packs comes with five different patterns for each pair. It's completely ridiculous so they often get to rock the socks at school. The only way to fight them is buying a few dozen at a time and replace them all at once. There's no new socks and old socks, just all the socks of one brand and style that all match. Flat Earth websites were started as a practice arena for online manipulation. If they were able to convince people of such an absurdity, then people could be convinced of anything. And, once convinced, they will propagate the lie for you. This is called Project Mockingbird. CIA was tasked with spreading misinformation to manipulate what people would believe to be the truth. This was the 1950s. Nothing has really changed. The Chinese government is severely downplaying the amount of confirmed cases of coronavirus infections, as well as the spread and intensity. Why? They've done it before. It's probably a simple matter of saving face so they don't look bad. The city where the virus started is currently in complete lockdown. No one in or out. Do you know how many people live in that city? 11 million people. New York City has about 9 million for comparison. Biggest quarantine in history. You think only 25 people have died in that city? That the government hypes up the most ridiculous conspiracy theories to divert attention. They did it with UFOs and coining conspiracy theory. I feel this happened with 9-11. You had people claiming the planes weren't real and other nonsense distracting from the real questions about Saudi Arabia's involvement in their sponsorship of Al-Qaeda to get the US involved in the Middle East again. The whole thing was by definition a conspiracy but if you called it that or brought it up you would be lumped in with those crazy conspiracy theorists with the added stigma of being unpatriotic for questioning the official narrative. Vapes were invented to ensure the next generation got addicted to nicotine. The future of cigarettes looked bleak as more smokers were giving up and fewer new people, teenagers and children especially, were taking up smoking. There was no need for a new product to help people quit, they were quitting just fine already. But suddenly a new nicotine-based product shows up that can make the perfect smoke for cool tricks and has flavors like candy floss. Profit margins are looking good again and the next generation of lifelong nicotine addicts is assured. We know they were invented to help get people off cigarettes. We know because the inventor of the modern vape is a relatively middle-class dude in China who made it to help his dad stop smoking. He never got terribly rich from it, making his involvement in a conspiracy unlikely. Now after the invention, are vapes being used to purposefully addict another generation to nicotine? Well that's not really a secret conspiracy, given that Juul is literally owned by a tobacco company, now is it? Though I would still say it's a conspiracy because pretty sure the tobacco people would deny it to the end of their days. It's my understanding a conspiracy is a secret plan that is unlawful or harmful. People say it can't be a conspiracy because the government is against vaping. The government does not have to be in on the conspiracy, that camel cigarette ad aimed at children also got banned, right? It is possible to have a conspiracy the government isn't involved with. We also don't all have the same government. I'm from the UK. 
Britney Spears is held captive by her dad's legal hold on her mental stability. He's conservator of her estate and has full oversight of her career. He has full financial control of her life. Her dad brought her back from mental instability though. She was losing it and going to ruin her career and life and he got control and got her back on track, and of course he needed to have authority over her to do so. High art galleries are just a way for organized crime to launder money through high-priced art pieces and charitable donations. That's the reason you see pieces like two solid colored canvases side by side make $43 million. Tax laws are stupid in many ways. Art is one of them. Accurately appraising the value of art, particular abstract of modern art, is effectively impossible because there will always be disagreements. So, the value that a piece is most recently sold for is usually used. If a single artist has a portfolio of similar works, then after a piece is sold the other similar pieces can be appropriately reappraised at an updated value based upon that sale. So the way this scam works is that a group of wealthy people get together and decide on an artist. One buy a piece for, say, $1,000. Displays it. Waits. A few months later, another buys another piece for $10,000, well above asking price. Displays it. Waits. Next one buys a piece for $50,000, again well above the current asking price, even taking into account the sudden meteoric rise in popularity. This can continue, with more steps and sometimes with slightly smaller gaps, even for a few years. Finally at the end of all of this, each person in the chain donates their painting and writes the value of the piece off as a charitable donation to avoid paying taxes. And, here's the beauty, the number they use is based upon the current value which is appraised based upon the purchase price of their wealthy friend who's in on it for a different painting, not the price they actually paid. So these wealthy people end up being able to write off thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations despite only actually paying a fraction of that. Artists hate this, but can't really say no to it because the two options are to either get unjustifiably famous and make some extra money or get blacklisted from galleries, basically there's no way to have a middle ground. Source, good friend who makes a living creating art. Harry and Meghan stepping back from royal duties is probably something they wanted to do, but the timing of it was to make everyone concentrate on that. And not the fact that Prince Andrew was best mates with Jeffrey Epstein and has been accused of shagging an underage girl. Harry said in a recent interview, I won't be bullied into the same game that killed my mum, Diana. I bet he found out his entire family are child fondlers, and I also bet Diana found out that same information which ultimately led to her demise. The US Army have a bigger influence on Hollywood action movies than you think in order for people to be influenced at a younger age to join the army. Michael Bay movies are basically giant ads for the military and random companies. In one of the Transformers films there's a long shot of the main character buying a coke from a vending machine and drinking it. And every movie plugs the military. Some of his movies literally are about the military. Most world leaders have no idea what they are doing in the slightest. Honestly there's no training in the world that can prepare you to be the leader of a country. And there's no other job like it on earth. I think the problems we as humans have created are beyond the scope of what we as humans can fix. I'd be willing to bet money that a lot of the issues we face are down to overpopulation, and I doubt there's anything we can do to fix it besides eradicating half the population. No world leader can fix our issues. The real conspiracy, the governments are too dumb and ineffective to plan conspiracies. Conspiracy theories are too convoluted. Imagine getting 10 people in your life to cooperate at doing a task. It's pretty hard to get 10 strangers to shut the hell up for example. Now imagine thousands of strangers cooperating to do a complicated cover-up that they can expose. I doubt 99% of conspiracy theories acknowledge that humans just can't keep their mouths shut. Military Industrial Complex While not a distinct elite cabal operating in coordination, there are many separate high net worth individuals and particular corporations whom directly derive profit from war. They have no interest in peace and continue to prosper in an environment of low to moderate level continuous warfare. Eisenhower called it 70 years ago. Check out Iraq for sale on YouTube. I watched it, while I was deployed to Iraq, ironically, and had to take a minute to understand it all. I knew that there was something fishy from the start but I've never been sure. I believe Kurt Cobain was murdered. The note he supposedly left had three different styles of writing. When Kurt's autopsy was performed, he had enough drugs in his system to kill him three times over and he was drunk enough that he couldn't lift his own head, so how could he shoot himself in the head with a shotgun? Also the bullet casing was on the wrong side of his body for him to have shot himself, 
Courtney Love was practicing his handwriting, the heroin kit was neatly put away when why would he do that and how could he do that? Also the note started in his handwriting and wasn't a suicide note, as soon as the handwriting changed it turned into a suicide note, a guy who was friends with both Courtney Love and Kurt Cobain was always too high on heroin because of Courtney Love to be interviewed by Courtney Love's private detective. Even the private detective thought everything was suspicious as Helen started investigating her of his own accord. Just saying, I think it was Courtney Love. The majority of celebrity Scientologists joined for networking purposes, but then found themselves in over their head. I think it's more that they treat celebrities much, much better than the rank and file. I saw one of those popular anti-Scientology documentaries recently and they made it pretty obvious that Tom Cruise is pretty much treated like a Roman Emperor and has his every whim catered to. I assume it's like that for all celebrities. Besides, Scientology keeps records of their auditing sessions and can blackmail them with anything in it. There's a rumor that Travolta would like to leave the church but they've got him on tape admitting to having sex with guys and are using it to blackmail him. Conspiracy theories are actually deliberately diffused to keep the people busy thinking about stupid conspiracy theories rather than thinking about what is actually going on. And 1 in 10 conspiracies are true. They make and distribute conspiracy theories as a way to discredit people. Apple actually does this in the sense that they convolute the leaks market with fakes and useless patents. The US government might not have completely orchestrated 9-11, but I absolutely believe it was catalyzed and allowed to happen. Everything that followed was way too convenient for it to be an accident, from the oil money we got out of it, to the forever war we've put ourselves into. War is the single greatest thing for an economy. Avril Lavigne incorporated her name and sold the rights to an imposter so she could retire. The conspiracy is that that is the imposter and the real Avril Lavigne quit years ago. Television networks got some kind of incentive to create tons of shows glorifying work in the medical profession. George Clooney almost single-handedly inspired thousands and thousands of people to get their nursing degree. I believe they did this because there was a seriously critical lack of healthcare professionals prior to the explosive increase in medical dramas and even comedies. I base this on zero research, just simple observation. Facebook is data mining and listening to us through the microphones on our phones. I swear to God, sometimes I'll just think about something and five minutes later, it's being advertised on my newsfeed. Every single person I know has said the same thing, they will mention something in passing and next time they check Facebook, there it is. I have heard stories about people having a TV show on in the background where somebody is speaking a different language and their targeted ads suddenly start appearing in Spanish or German or what have you. There is no secret society, just peer groups of power. The most powerful people have powerful friends. They go to the same venues, they can afford to anyway, and have the same interests. The conspiracy goes no deeper than friendship as an abstract concept and so long as powerful people have friends they will have de facto cabals. So long as rich people love their kids there will be de facto dynasties. The catch is, all the people of power are just as smart as you and me, for the most part. Nobody deserves this power more than others. Most of the people with the power to do harm are blind to how much harm they do because they're just as broken and flawed as we are and just as motivated to not see themselves as the bad guy. They take credit when things are good because it feels good to be good. They pass the buck when things are bad because they both don't want to see themselves as bad. It's all an accident caused by humans being human. That we were developed as slaves by people from another planet to mine gold for them. They need it for their electronics. They have been manipulating everything from terrorist attacks to global warming as distractions and to incite fear to push us towards a one world government so someone can profit from our labor but with greater control. This is why governments are nothing more than behavior management slash HR slash training for specialist slaves. You go to school just so you can become a specialist slave to take part in an economy that directly or indirectly supports stripping resources from the planet. This is why the world seems to be moving towards centralizing power. There are people today who are volunteering to be microchipped so that when we protest our conditions, they can shut us off from our money. This is why banks and countries no longer use the gold standard. They want us to have the imaginary digital numbers while they extract the stuff that matters. They pushed for global warming and made sure governments denied it until there was a tipping point so that we have to create a one world solution to combat it. Royal families know about this because they are descendants of these extraterrestrials, who made the original humans. The world is controlled by a small group of people or families who have been promised immortality in exchange for their service. 
This is why someone like Robert Mugabe, a high-ranking Freemason, could proclaim he will never die. These families seek out pure blood by looking for those whose genes match our ancient gods or the extraterrestrials. The family with the purest DNA will then be able to lay claim as rightful rulers of the planet. In the meantime, the elite and their families exploit our instincts by using all sorts of force and power to get us to do what they want. Our very lives only have value as long as we work or else we'll starve to death. Our religions have been used to control the population by either banning contraception or insisting men and women marry or else chaos and riots, to ensure as men and women cannot have fair access to sex and procreation. Consumerism is a lifestyle ideal because it requires absolute submission to corporations to drive production so our resources can be extracted. Don't just believe that people with power are dumb or rich people are into weird stuff. Look at what they value and ask yourselves why they need more power. Why is there so much emphasis on going to space? Why haven't we fixed the problems here? Why do our politicians lie so much? We only see the surface stuff that doesn't make sense but deep down there are layers of information, control and power we cannot even begin to imagine. Thanks for listening to Radio TTS. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell for more videos. Click the right box for the conspiracy playlist. Let us know in the comments what you think about these theories. Share your own conspiracy theories in the comments below.